Hello everybody, Randy Woods here and welcome to my shop and welcome to part four of my chessboard build. This video is all about applying this finish and a few other details. Well, the chessboard is finally complete. I still need to make my chess pieces. I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to do that, and I don't know if that's going to be a future video. I, I really haven't decided. I've got uh, a lot going on right now. Um, but I did want to say a couple things before I really get into to the, the finish and the, some of the details. Uh, number one is, if you've been following this build, I apologize. Uh, a whole lot of life has happened, and this has taken way longer than it was supposed to. And, uh, but it's, it's finally done now, and I'm happy with the result. Um, I do want to ask uh, everybody that's enjoying these videos and enjoy what I do, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and, and help me out that way. Also, you can check me out over at rkwoodsworking.com. Uh, that's my website, and that's where I, it's kind of a, a collective of all my, my woodworking content, so I'd love to see you over there. And I just want to say thank you for everybody's support and thank you for following along uh, on this build. It's been a lot of fun and uh, I've had a great time. I wanted to add a couple of details uh, to my drawer. Uh, first and foremost, I didn't really want all my pieces in the drawer just rattling around. So I added these dividers and also uh, I flocked the inside of this. Now before I got started, I did get some graphing paper and I kind of drew the dimensions on it and I kind of figured out how I wanted to, uh, to, to lay out these dividers. I started out with two three quarter inch dividers that were cut to the length of the inside of my drawer. And then using a miter gauge with an auxiliary fence attached to it and a dado blade, I cut slots into my two main dividers. I made some other dividers by first milling some stock down to the same thickness of the slots I just made, and then I basically just glued everything in place. I really love using suede flock on the inside of boxes. This product is fantastic and it's available in many colors. I chose the Cardinal Red for this project. There is two parts to this. You first apply the color matched glue and then using the mini flock applicator, you apply the matching fibers. I will leave a link to this product down in the video's description. I didn't think about it at the time, but it's a really good idea to wear a respirator when doing this. I love flocking the inside of boxes and the inside of, of drawers and, and projects like this for a couple of reasons. Number one, it looks really good, but it also, uh, sometimes it's really hard to sand the inside of something and it kind of covers up all the imperfections. So it, it covers up the imperfections, it looks great, and I cannot overstate uh, how much I love uh, using that product. Now the finish I'm going to use on this uh, actually came from a good friend of mine, so I want to give a shout out to Carl Davis. But it's just a blend of uh, boiled linseed oil, wipe on poly, and tongue oil. I recently used this on a project and I really liked the way it turned out. Uh, the only problem I have with using it on this chessboard is I'm not really sure about the durability. I think it'll be fine for the, the, the case of the chessboard, but for the playing surface, 
Um, I might have to add a couple of uh, extra coats of just wipe on poly. I basically just mixed all three of those together in equal parts. It's very easy to apply. You just you wipe it on, you leave it on for about 10 minutes, you wipe off the excess, and then you come back about 20 minutes later and kind of uh, uh, buff it out with a, with a dry rag. Very easy to use, and this, this will probably be my new go-to finish. I'm being very careful not to get any finish on the very top of this because that's where the lid is going to be glued. I don't want to compromise that glue joint. I really can't overstate the difference a little bit of wax can make, especially when you have a wood on wood scenario like this. I did apply several extra coats of just wipe on poly to the playing surface. This gave the top of the board a slightly different sheen, but I was okay with it. I thought it actually looked pretty good. Well, we are really in the home stretch of this project. Now I've got three things left to do. I have not attached the top. Now I've been saving that to the very end just so I'll be able to get my hands in here and still be able to work. So I need to attach the top. I'm going to put these felt pads on the bottom corners of the, the base and I'm going to add a couple of stops that will prevent this drawer from sliding all the way out. One other thing I'll mention, those three compartments in the very back of the drawer, uh, once this drawer is in place and the top is glued on, uh, you're, I'm not going to be able to access those last three compartments. I knew this from the beginning, so the real question is, why did I, why did I flock those three compartments when you're not even going to be able to see them or, or reach them? And the answer to that is, well, I, I didn't mean to. I was just on autopilot, and I did what I did. I made some marks underneath the top of the chessboard to help me line up the corners. Uh, this worked pretty good, but once I started applying clamping pressure on top, the, the top kind of slid out of place, so I had to keep adjusting it to get it, get it in the right spot. So this glue up was a little more difficult than I had anticipated. A couple of weights for good measure.
Well, that about does it for this video in this series. Uh, I think this chessboard turned out fantastic. And if you like this video, be sure to click on the like button and also subscribe to my channel for all my future content. And as always, be sure to head on over to rkwoodsworking.com and check out all my other woodworking related content. I hope to see you over there and we'll see you next time.